Any comment or discussion of that point? Yes, Jonathan. Concerning your point about the fantastic ages, while I agree with that, um, I having difficulty seeing how that's not anything more than an argument from personal incredulity, because I know plenty of young Earth creationists who will bite the bullet on that point. Yeah, well, and some things are incredulous, I think. Um, it, it is unbelievable um, that the, I think the ancient author would have thought that people like Methuselah lived for 900 years, and moreover, remember the, the point that I make that taking them literally causes these really odd consequences, like Shem outliving Abraham for 35 years. And the fact that ancient Jews felt uncomfortable about this is evident in the fact that in the um, uh, Samaritan and Septuagint texts of the Pentateuch, these numbers are changed so as to make them less awkward, that the ages are reduced. Now, scholars agree that the Masoretic text, the one that we have our translation based on, is probably the right text. It's original. But nevertheless, these other texts, the Samaritan and the Septuagint, show how uncomfortable ancient Jews felt about the length of these lifespans. So it's not just incredulity, it's that they also produce these sort of chronological anomalies that just don't seem right. Okay. Thank yes, you. Ben, next to you. I actually did a presentation on that very thing not all that long ago on, on the Septuagint numbers versus the Masoretic text. I actually think the Septuagint numbers have the better... Really? Uh, yeah, have the better um, histor historical support. Uh, but, and that's because... The difference is all off by 100, except for one of them, which is off by 50. And it looks like uh, the one that's off by 50 could have easily been added 100 years to it, but you couldn't have subtracted 100 years from it. Okay. Anyhow, there's, there's a whole host of reasons for that. If there are gaps in the genealogies, though, that alleviates the problem of Abraham uh, existing yeah. while Noah and Shem Good Plus, point. if you add the Septuagint numbers to it, that also alleviates that problem. However, I do agree that there are gaps in the genealogies. Um, as for the ages, I think there could be some scientific reasons. Uh, you know, even, I mean, uh, Moses lives 120. Abraham lives 180. We don't seem to, or 175. Mm -hmm. We don't seem to have as much of a problem with that. 900, well, yeah, yeah. I mean, I know, but it's one of those things that we just don't know genetically. Right. Well, it's a cumulative argument here that I'm, I'm presenting, uh, and I think this would be one factor, but thank you. Good, good response, Ben. Anyone else? My question is pretty simple. Uh, antediluvian and postdiluvian, what, what does that mean? Say, say again now. Antediluvian, is that the, the term? Antediluvians, yeah, those are those who lived before the flood, okay, before so the deluge. Okay, that's all I had. <laughs> okay, so antediluvians are those who lived before the flood, postdiluvians are those who live after the flood. And as I say, in these Mesopotamian king lists, they have these fantastically long reigns prior to the flood, and then afterwards, diminished reigns. And you have the similar pattern in Genesis with the ages of the antediluvian patriarchs who lived for centuries, and then afterwards, the ages are diminishing. Yes, Steve. I just read a book, uh, Rebooting the Bible, which agrees with what Ben said, saying that the uh, at 100 AD there was a, a conspiracy to get rid of 1,300 years to confront Jesus being the Messiah. And that's what got adopted into the Masoretic Test, that the Septuagint is most accurate. And plus, if you use the date of Josephus, the Exodus, it agrees with what the Septuagint dates when you add it, at which agrees with all archaeology of the destruction of Jericho and the surrounding cities. Well, um, thank you for that. I, I would just say that when you read Old Testament commentaries on Genesis, I think that I've never seen anyone yet disagree with the priority of the Masoretic text. Uh, everyone seems to think that I've read, and I've read quite a few, that the Septuagintal text, that's the Greek text, 
of the Old Testament. That's not the original language. That's a Greek translation. And then the Samaritan text of the Pentateuch, everybody seems to think that those numbers have been changed because of these difficulties. But uh, as Ben and you indicate, everything is open for discussion. William Lane Craig says here that out of all the commentaries that he's read, and he's read quite a lot, he has never come across anyone who favors the genealogies in the Greek Septuagint over the Masoretic. They all seem to agree that the Septuagint's numbers are altered and that the Hebrew Masoretic text is original. That's odd. I'm surprised that someone as educated as William Lane Craig has never heard of Josephus or Eusebius. Josephus was a very prominent first century Jewish historian, and when he lists off the genealogies in his work called The Antiquities of the Jews, Josephus includes the extra hundred years on six generations, which agrees with the Greek Septuagint. Now, Eusebius was a very prominent 4th century church historian, and when he lists off the genealogies in his work called the Chronicon, Eusebius favors the Greek Septuagint. He says, let us now proceed to the times after the flood. He says, our Septuagint text and this Samaritan Hebrew text are in harmony regarding the number of years each man lived prior to fathering a son. He says they both diverge from the Jewish Hebrew version by 650 years. Notice how he says 650 years. That's an extra 100 years on six generations and an extra 50 years on the seventh generation. Now, look at what he says about the Hebrew Bible. Now, he's in the fourth century. He says the rational conclusion is that the figures provided in the Jewish version are in error. That's the Jewish version of the 4th century after Christ. He goes on and he says it is obvious that the Hebrew Jewish version is incorrect. And he goes on. He says it is possible to show that the Jewish version is unreliable. And then he finally concludes and says, Thus it is patently clear that the Septuagint was translated from old and accurate Hebrew copies and is the most appropriate text for us to use in our present chronicle. Notice how he says that the Septuagint was translated from old and accurate Hebrew copies. It's not the original Hebrew, but it was translated from the original Hebrew. And he goes on and he says, especially since the Church of Christ, which has spread throughout the world, supports only this version. And since the apostles and disciples of Christ used and transmitted this version. So the church of his day only trusted the Septuagint. They did not trust the Hebrew text of the unbelieving Jews who had rejected Christ and rejected the gospel. And William Lane Craig says here that he doesn't know of anyone who favors the Septuagint's chronology over the Hebrew Masoretic. I've never seen anyone yet disagree with the priority of the Masoretic text. Uh, everyone seems to think that I've read, and I've read quite a few, that the Septuagintal text, that's the Greek text of the Old Testament. That's not the original language. That's a Greek translation. And then the Samaritan text of the Pentateuch, everybody seems to think that those numbers have been changed because of these difficulties. Really? He's never heard of Josephus? He's never heard of Eusebius? You know, uh, Theophilus of Antioch was a second century church father. He includes the extra hundred years on those six generations. He agrees with the Greek Septuagint. There was also Julius Africanus, a 3rd century church historian. He includes the extra 100 years on those six generations. He sides with the Greek Septuagint. So what do we have here? We've got a 4th century church historian. We've got 2nd and 3rd century church historians and a church father. And we've got a 1st century Jewish historian. All of these guys agree with the Greek Septuagint, but William Lane Craig has apparently... Never heard of any of these guys. So 
Pay no attention to the men behind the curtain. Close that curtain. I don't want to see them. Even in my peripheral. Huh? Snap it. Snap it shut. 